y'all and welcome back to Kelly's Kitchen. I know it has been yet again a minute since I have uploaded on this channel, but if you follow me on my main channel, Kelly's Corner, then you know everything I've been up to. We've moved. We've also had some personal things going on in our life and it's been really hard to upload over here, but, but we finally got moved. We got settled in our house. And so I was able to record some a lot of these are before Christmas, so bear with me, but regardless of the timing, they were all very delicious, and I think you guys will enjoy them as well. So if you need some meal ideas, some dinner ideas, get out your pen and paper, and we are gonna get to cooking. So on this day, this was actually a few days after we moved in, I was making chicken clubs. So I've got some chicken breasts. I cut those in half. Uh, you also saw me pop some bacon in the oven. I prefer to cook my bacon in the oven so that it's not popping everywhere. So I just pop it in the oven on 400 for about 20 minutes. While that's in the oven, I'm going to work on my chicken. I've cut my chicken breast in half. I'm also going to tenderize it and then I'm going to season it with some of the Kinder's all purpose and some onion powder. I was also very generous with the seasoning. I wanted lots of flavor. And then here in a second, we're going to make a homemade honey mustard. I'm just gonna pop these in my skillet on a medium high heat with some olive oil and let those cook on both sides for about 45 minutes until it reaches 165. I am always so paranoid about cooking chicken that I end up overcooking it, but I did finally get a meat thermometer so I can tell when the chicken is done and I'm not cooking it to death. In the meantime, I'm gonna pop some French fries into the air fryer. We're gonna have some fries with our clubs and to make the homemade honey mustard, it's really easy. You just need three ingredients, mustard, mayonnaise, and some honey. And I don't really have measurements for this. I'm sure that there's a recipe somewhere out there that has the measurements, but I never measure. I just do it to taste and I just keep adding a little of whatever I think it needs. So if I think it needs a little more honey, I'll add some more of that or some more mayonnaise, then I'll do that. And I'll keep adding until I get the taste just right. Thing is laid out and we are ready to make our sandwiches. I also sliced up some lettuce and tomato to have on these and these were so good. I need to make these again because they were a really big hit. So for this next dinner, I really was wanting some homemade fried pork chops. So that's what I'm doing tonight. I've got some boneless chops. So over in a dish, I'm mixing up some egg and this is gonna be like a glue for my crust. So I'm gonna scramble those. And then when I go to coat the pork chops, I'll dip them into the flour, into the egg, and then back into the flour. And that's the best way that I have found to get my crust to stick to my pork chop. And then over in a separate dish, I've got some all-purpose flour, and I'm also gonna put in some of this Kinder's The Blend Seasoning.
with our pork chops, I decided to do some rice and gravy. I'm just using instant rice. I'm going to pop that into the microwave and then I'm going to make a gravy out of, I did a mixture of what was left in the pan from my pork chops, but also the brown gravy mix that you can buy in the canister. I used a little bit of that and made up a very quick gravy. My kids also really like corn on the cob, so I'm boiling some of that and I'll also open up a can of green beans. So very easy dinner. being very careful with this whisk at the time of filming this this was the only whisk that I had it is a metal one and these are my caraway pots so I was being very careful trying my hardest not to actually touch the bottom as I'm getting this gravy all mixed up I was just letting this gravy thicken up a little bit and then dinner is ready to serve this is one of my favorite comfort meals there's something about homemade fried pork chops that reminds me of going to my grandparents house my nana used to make fried pork chops all the time and of course i had to serve this up with a big glass of sweet tea all right on to our next night this is what i would call a tired mama meal by the way, I am planning on bringing that series back very soon here on this channel. So I've got some non bread here and I'm going to do some non pizza. I'm going to do three different ones. I have one kid that just eats cheese on his pizza and then my other two like the pepperoni with the cheese. So I'm going to do a cheese one for him, a pepperoni and cheese for the other two. And then for myself, I really wanted some barbecue chicken pizza. So on mine, I'm just going to be using some rotisserie chicken, some barbecue sauce, and a few bacon bits. And then for the kids, it's just the basic marinara cheese and pepperoni. So sometimes I'll give these to the kids instead of doing an actual frozen pizza. I'm not saying that I don't ever give my kids frozen pizza because I totally do, but I feel better about these. They really don't take a lot of effort. They're really easy to throw together. So keeping some non bread in your freezer is always a good idea. And then you just need some marinara, some mozzarella and some pepperoni. And there you go. You have a semi homemade pizza. You could also do like a fun make it yourself pizza night where everybody chooses what toppings they want because these little non breads are the perfect personal size pizzas. I'm just gonna pop these in the oven for a few minutes on 350 just until they're all toasty and melted and that was our dinner I really enjoyed my barbecue chicken pizza it was really good on the side I had a little bit of salad my kids are not gonna touch a salad but I had some with mine and it was really good so moving on to the next night so I was doing some barbecue chicken in the oven on this night and to go with it, I really wanted to do some homemade crock pot mac and cheese. So I will put this recipe down below, but you'll need some elbow pasta, some milk, some heavy whipping cream, and some Velveeta block cheese. I also used a variety of shredded cheeses that I had in my refrigerator that I just needed to use. I poured those in as well. But like I said, I'll have the recipe down below that you can follow. This was some of the best mac and cheese that I've had in a long time. It was really good.
I did set my crock pot on low for about four hours, but I wanted to show you guys what it was looking like about an hour into it. It was starting to melt down really good. So I'm going to go ahead and stir this. And as I said before, I will have the recipe down below, but just to let you guys know the cheeses that I use because I didn't strictly follow the recipe. I just used the cheese that I had on hand. So I did put in some Velveeta as the recipe calls, and I believe it also called for cheddar. So I put in some of that. I also had a little bit of shredded Parmesan that I needed to use, and then also a little bit of mozzarella. So that's all the cheeses that I used, and I didn't film doing the chicken. I think it's chicken wings I did on this night. I just popped those in the oven with some barbecue sauce and sliced up some cucumber, and that was our dinner. I love macaroni and cheese with anything barbecue. My kids love macaroni and cheese, and they really enjoyed this crock pot recipe. So like I said, I will have that recipe down below but moving on to our next dinner I'm sure most of y'all have seen this roast recipe a million times by now but if you haven't this is the Mississippi roast but this is my favorite roast recipe if I'm gonna make a roast this is the one that I usually like to do so you'll need some brown gravy some ranch powder it calls for a packet of each or about two tablespoons. I don't really measure. I just sprinkle a little bit of both or a lot of both, I should say. And then some pepperoncinis. You can put however many of those that you like with a little bit of the juice. I like to add a little bit of extra on the juice because it adds a little bit of extra flavor. My kids really like it too. And then you just wanna put a stick of butter on top. You can cook this on low or high, just depending on how fast or slow you want it to cook. And then over in a separate crock pot, I'm gonna do some brown sugar, honey carrots to go with our roast. Figured that would pair really well with our roast since the roast is a little, it's got a little tiny kick to it, not a lot, but I figured it would be a good mix of sweet and salty. And I was right. They were really, really good. I just used baby carrots. I drizzled on some honey, sprinkled on some brown sugar and some butter. And I let those cook in the crock pot for a few hours on low. And I did pour in about a fourth of a cup of water as well. I almost forgot about that, but I let those cook on low for several hours. And this paired really well with our roast. Like I said, it was a good mix of sweet and salty so moving on to the very last recipe I'm gonna share with you guys today so like I said earlier in the video this was before Christmas when I filmed these so I was making a lot of cozy <laughs> dinners warm dinners and potato soup is definitely one of our favorites in the colder months so I got some russet potatoes that I peeled and diced up I'm gonna put in four cups of chicken broth and I like to get the container of chicken bouillon powder instead of buying the cartons of chicken broth it's more cost effective and it lasts so much longer so I'm gonna put in four cups of chicken broth and then one can of cream of chicken we're gonna put in some salt and pepper and then here in a second I'm gonna dice up an onion we're gonna throw that in cook this on high for about five hours and then about the last 30 minutes I'm gonna cube up my block of cream cheese put that in there and let it continue to cook for the last 30 minutes just to give that cream cheese time to melt down and that was dinner on this night so good for our toppings on potato soup we like to do shredded cheese and bacon bits again so delicious so i will have all the recipes that i can link down below in the description box i really appreciate you guys watching today's video and hanging in there and being patient with me as i get new content up on this channel but thank you guys for watching remember to leave some kind of food related emoji down in the comments that just lets me know that you watched until the end and i'll see you guys in the next one